Hi everyone, just a quick message before I start my video. Uh, quite a number of you have said there are audio quality issues, particularly when I use my camcorder. It has a built-in microphone and it's quite poor. Um, basically the solution is to buy a new camera, but a new camera is very expensive, so I've created a GoFundMe campaign. The link will be in the description. If you want to donate, cool. If not, don't worry. But I thought I'd let you know. Thanks, bye. Okay, so I've got a breadboard here, and I've got an ESP32. So if you're using an Arduino or an ESP8266, that's also cool. Um, so for this particular board here, this particular board is not breadboard friendly, so I'm going to push it in here, just anywhere really. But I want to expose VIN, ground, and D12. If you've got an Arduino, you'd probably use, um, you'd want 5V, you'd want ground, and you'd want uh, any of the digital pins. Probably pin 2. But with the Arduino it wouldn't matter anyway because it's breadboard friendly. Either way, put your microcontroller in here. Now with the relay, you can see that it's 5 pins. And this middle one here, you should find that if you put it in here, you can, you can get it to fit perfectly. And it even clips in. But sometimes you need to just expand these a little bit, you know, um, spread them out just so that you can uh, get a proper fit. Anyway, I'm going to put this, uh, I'll put it this side. And I'm going to put this here in the groove and what it should do is it should push the end of the pin down there you go the end of the jumper wire sorry and um, that will form as a way of um, gaining access to that uh, common pin if you like okay so now we know the um, pin out we'll push the, the uh, transistor in there we want the base pin in line with D12 if you're using an ESP32, if you're using an Arduino or an ESP8266, then make it correspond to whichever pin you want to use. Arduino probably pin 2. Any digital pin will do though. So now we want to add a resistor from D12 to the base pin to join them both together. And this serves as a current limiting resistor because if we didn't have the current limiting resistor then the base pin could continually draw from the microcontroller and we don't want to do that because well it's just not the idea we don't want to do it so yeah that's the current limiting resistor to protect our microcontroller basically instead of sinking the pin down to ground so I've got a 1k resistor there <coughs> the code is brown black red which is 1 0 and then 2 which is 2 zero, so 1 0 0 0 if you're using a 5 volt microcontroller, um, maybe you could use a slightly higher resistor, but I'm going to stick with the 1K. Now we want to wire the coil. So you want to go from V in, which might also be raw or basically 5 volts. Then you go from 5 volts to the coil. And then we want to go from the coil, after we've powered it, to the collector. And the collector in this particular transistor is pin 2. So collector. So we've got 5 volts to the coil and then to the collector. Now from the collector, if the transistor is turned on, then the collector and the emitter will be shorted together, effectively. Um, which can help us to complete the circuit in order to turn the coil on. So there we want to go from the emitter to ground, and it's pretty simple. So we go from 5 volts to the coil, and then from the coil to the transistor which is going to be a low side switch and then if it's switched on the circuit gets completed if it's switched off then there's a break in the circuit in the transistor so that's how that's going to work now like I said earlier we need a diode and the diode is to stop um, uh, the huge uh, surge if you like in voltage and the diode as we mentioned before um, gets placed in the opposite polarity than you original than you think. So we're going to go from there to there. So I've got the band, the grey band. Oops, what's up on there? I just made a mess of that. So we've got the grey band on the plus side, which will be plus five in this situation. I can just get this thing in. It's absolutely freezing in here today. Um, I think it's about minus one outside, and um, yeah, it's freezing. 
so I can barely feel the components. Anyway, right, so the diode's in place. So, um, we're done. Uh, that's everything. So, well, if you want, you can also add one of these as well. Um, this is so that we can test the, um, the resistance of the coil to see if it's turning on or off. But it's not really essential at the moment. So, now we've got this wired up, we need some input or some way to control the input here in order to control whether this is going to be turned on or off. And you can do this in lots of different ways. You could you could use a button and you could um, use an input pull up and press the button and this will turn on and when you let go of the button it will turn off. You could do it that way. Um, or you could just do it on a timer or something. And I just want to do the easiest way to show you the relay working. So I'm going to do it on a timer. I'm going to say switch this on or off every... I don't know, 5 seconds. Yeah, I'll do that. So I'm going to go over to the computer now, um, do some quick and easy programming to show you uh, this thing switching on and off every 5 seconds. Okay. Right, so let's quickly get this thing working. So we want to define, define, um, well, what should we call it? Relay. Relay pin as pin 12. Then over here, um, we'll have pin mode relay pin um, and it's an output output then very simply on here we want to do um, digital right digital right digital right relay pin high which will tell the transistor to turn on then we want a delay of 5 seconds <clears throat> then we want relay pin low and then 5 seconds again um, so let's just check we've got relay pin 12 output relay pin high relay pin low so that should work so control U let's see what it does Okay, it's done uploading, and uh, I can hear something ticking, so that looks um, it looks promising. So, um, I'm going to go over to the camera now, and we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to put this um, multimeter into ohms mode, and I'll check the resistance, and you can see if it's switching on and off, which obviously it is, because you can, well, I can hear it clicking. Anyway, so that's open circuit, and that's closed circuit. Open circuit and it will return to closed circuit so it's definitely working properly and there we go so that's how you can um, use relays in your microcontroller circuits that's how you wire them up um, with all the standard uh, precautions put in place I guess so incidentally we can also use the, the other side of the relay here so at the moment if that one's switched on that one's off and if that one goes on then this one goes off and basically that's just how, how it works. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.